Hello, everyone. Hopefully you can see me all right. You can hear me okay. Let me know in the comments if this is the case because it's the first time that I'm doing it live. And I am so beyond nervous. <laughs> you have no idea. Oh my goodness, my heart is racing. Um, so I can see there's a few people who have joined. I'm trying to figure out how the comments section works. So just give me, hold on a second. <laughs> Hello, hello. Oh my goodness, this is so fun. So I wanted to do a live because I just wanted to connect with you guys. And you know, it's really nice to interact like via comments and on Instagram and all that kind of stuff. But I haven't really done any lives really, let alone on YouTube. So uh, yeah, and I met some of you at Scent Explore in New York back in December. And it was such a lovely moment. And so I thought that we should do it more often and not wait just one time per year to see each other. So yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. And oh my goodness, so many of you turned out. This is amazing. You guys are so sweet. Oh, this is so nice. Um, so a lot of you have sent me some questions both on um, Instagram and also on the YouTube community tab. So I thought that I could go through some of these uh, and answer them. And of course, if you have additional questions, I will go through the chat because the whole point of today's live is to have an interaction um, and you know something that's like more chilled and relaxed than my typical videos. So yeah, let's get straight into it, shall we? Okay, so I'm gonna first go through the community tab questions, uh, and there's a lot. So uh, let's start off with a perfume related question. Um, so Adriana Lordash, I hope I'm saying this right, We'd love to see you live. Topics are so many. Talk to us about different notes and three of favorites in each category. Um, so uh, three of my favorite perfume notes. I actually did a video on this. I want to say a maybe two years ago when I first started my YouTube channel. And um, this time around, I wanted to share with you three perfume notes that I've been really enjoying. They've kind of changed a little bit, so you're gonna get new things. Uh, the first note that I've been obsessed with lately is Orange Blossom. So um, I don't know, these last few months, that's literally all that I've wanted to wear. So one of the fragrances that I love with Orange Blossom is Le Vent by Orange Jane, which if you've been watching my latest videos, you probably know by now that I'm obsessed with this perfume. Uh, another note that I love and I've always loved um, is just in general the family of musks. And when I say musks, it's really like clean, fluffy, cocooning musks. So within that, um, the one that I prefer the most is Musque Noir. And the final note that I love is like exotic flowers, tiare, anything that really brings me to a tropical beach or destination because I'm based in the UK and as much as I love London, it's a great city, it's not always the best weather. So um, I would say I, I love tiare, so that would be the third note. And the perfume I would go for would be In Paradise, uh, Riviera from Ex Nihilo. It is musky goodness as well, musky exotic florals, literally perfection. So let me have a look at your comments to see if there's anything that you need me to answer. <laughs> um, alors, quelles sont les formations possibles pour mieux connaître le monde du parfum? Ah, so we have some French speakers. Um, and yes, I do always speak English on my channel, very rarely French. I will go through that. Um, uh, je je t'expliquerai uh, dans un petit moment parce que j'ai beaucoup de questions par rapport à ça. Donc, uh, on va revoir ça après. Uh, let's see. Thank you. So this top actually is a dress and it's more of a bodycon dress um, that I recently got from Reese and they have such a nice collection and I'm actually really excited because the, one of the videos I'll be posting this week, I'm bringing back the fragrances and outfits and like fashion elements. So mixing 
fragrance and outfits together. Um, I've, you know, from, from the few videos that I've done, you seem to really enjoy them. So I'm bringing that back and there's lots of really good pieces. So I'm excited for that. Um, okay. Lots and lots and lots of questions. And actually there's a lot of repeating questions with this. So let me go through this as well. Um, another question um, from Eleli. Uh, can you talk about how a typical day in your life is being a perfume reviewer and a fragrance content creator? So I actually got a few questions on kind of like my day-to-day -day life, like perfumery school and all that. So I'll just cover it all in here in one go um, and kind of like take you through everything chronologically so that you have a better idea of, you know, what the behind the scenes is other than like my channel. So um, how did I get obsessed with fragrances? Well, I have always loved perfume and a big influence with my love for fragrances is my mom because she is just as obsessed, if not more obsessed than I am with fragrances. And one of the most fond memories that I have as a child was one of my birthdays she would always organize like the most amazing birthday parties with lots of games and all that kind of stuff and one of the games had to do with smelling because I had the I don't know if you guys know this like there's a board game with uh scents and it's kind of how do I describe this it's sort of the bingo of perfume does that make any sense? Uh, where you have a board with different um, like notes and ingredients and you just smell a little container and then you, you, you think it's something. And if you think that you have that ingredient on your board then you place it on there anyways, that was one of my um, birthday party games and we were all blindfolded and I think I won that game. So I was really proud and I just really enjoyed it as well. Like smelling all these different scents. Um, so she really kickstarted everything. Fast forward to university. I studied life sciences for my bachelor's degree when I was uh, studying in, in Canada. And I wanted to become a neurosurgeon actually, um, because I just found that like neurobiology was fascinating. I loved everything that had to do with surgery. And a few of my courses were pre-med as well. Um, that being said, after discussing at length how long it would take to become a neurosurgeon, I kind of, you know, turned away and decided to do something else and decided to focus on another passion, which was perfume. Now, I didn't want to completely abandon um, the scientific side of things. So I, I wanted to find, you know, something that combined that science with fragrance. And that's when I found my master's degree, which combines science but also business so there's a creative side um and a business side that i wanted to learn about so that's when i went to isipka um many years ago now gosh i want to say like eight years ago something like that maybe more and um isipka is a perfumery school that is based in versailles just outside of paris and um has trained lots of noses um and so i did my degree there for a year it was also um in um, conjunction, I don't know if that's the right word, collaboration, not sure, but there was another university as well the second year where um, I lived in Italy for six months, which was super cool. And that was like more of the businessy kind of aspects of things. Um, and then after that, I did my internship um, in Fiamma which was uh, which is a perfume house of creation and marketing. And that was super interesting to kind of see like how it works in those perfume houses and you know have a better understanding of the perfume industry that just seemed to be like really top secret. You know, if you're not working in these perfume houses, like you don't really know what's going on. So I really enjoyed that. And then um, for personal reasons, I moved to London where I started uh, working in the beauty industry. And I worked in the beauty industry for several years before becoming a full-time content creator on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. So that's a little bit of um, my background and my day-to-day -day is very different. Like I don't have one day that resembles to the, the, the previous ones. So um, of course I have days that are a little bit more scheduled, like, okay, like I'll take two days to film for YouTube, TikTok, 
two days to edit or something like that. But then there could be perfume events, new launches, meetings. Um, one morning I could be reading a contract and, you know, trying to understand all this legal jargon, which I don't necessarily understand. Uh, so there's a lot of things like that that kind of make what I'm doing super interesting outside of content creation, you know. Um, one thing's for sure, though, I do have a very, like, I try to keep a structured day. So I wake up every day at 7 and I usually work between like, start work between 8.30 and 9. And then I work, you know, 12, 13, 14 hours a day, it depends. Um, but every day I wake up at seven like that, I have a schedule, you know? So let's have a look at the comments. Mm, okay, okay. Hi, hello from Canada. Hello, I love Canada. I used to live in Toronto, it was great. Literally the best four years of my life. Are you interested in collaborating for your own perfume? That is another um, uh, like a question that I got quite commonly uh, had to do with whether I would create my own fragrance or collaborate with a brand on a perfume. I think at this stage, I haven't found the right partner yet, as in like brand partner. And I haven't, um, if I wanna launch my own perfume, I want to, I don't want to just launch another fragrance on the market, you know, um, and it's not to sound like pretentious or anything, not at all. It's more like there's a lot of perfumes, a lot of launches uh, every year, and it's all already quite saturated. So if I come up with something, I want it to be uh, something that is really meaningful to me and also to you, because ultimately I want you guys to enjoy the fragrance. And this is something that's important to me. Like if I create something, I would want to embark you on the whole journey um, I would love to have my brand one day, um, and I have an idea of what I want to do, but it's, it's, it's not there yet. You know, it's not the right time to do it. Um, I need to think about it more and it, when it's, when it will happen, I will let you know, because you're going to be part of this journey big time. <laughs> uh, Okay, another question about collabs. Oh, Curly Fragrance, hey, <laughs> hey girl. <laughs> I finally did the live um, upon also her push to do it because I was really shy to do it. I was a little worried, I was like, ooh. Um, but it's actually really fun. It's really nice to see everyone. So many of you are dotted around the world, which is awesome, amazing. Um, let's have a look. She, oh, she's simply the best fragrance reviewer. Greetings from Mexico. That's so nice. Thank you so much. Honestly, like, I am so grateful for you guys. I don't think you understand. Those of you who have met me at Scent Explore would have seen a bit of a glimpse of it. I actually, I didn't really touch up on this, um, maybe a little bit in my vlog, but I got super emotional when I met some of you at Scent Explore. Um, I was talking with such a lovely group of ladies and all of a sudden, like all of the emotions just came out. They just burst and I ended up crying um, uncontrollably, which um, was interesting. And then when I got under control, um, I started feeling physically ill. So I had to sit down. And by the point where I had, I managed to sit down, I couldn't feel my arms anymore. And I was like, my fingers were tingling. <laughs> I couldn't see anything. I couldn't speak. Like. I was borderline having a panic attack, which I've had in the past. And I was like, okay, this is weird. This, this, this is not a stressful situation. Like this should be a happy thing. But I think it was just like way too much emotion. So, um, but all of this to say is the emotion came in the first place because you guys are so sweet, are so amazing and so supportive. And I'm just really grateful for you. So thank you for all your support. Truly, I am eternally grateful. So let's see what other messages. Too much fragrance knowledge for me to handle. I will keep things as easy as I can. <laughs> um, oh, Curly Sense is in the house. Hey, girl. Oh, oh my, my fellow YouTubers, they're so sweet. Um, have you tried Le Jardin Retrouve or Floraicou? I have not tried Jardin Retrouve. Floraicou, I have. I have a discovery set and I've tried a few of the fragrances. Actually, there's a new release 
um, I forget now what it's called. Um, I went to the launch of it and I already forgot the, the name of the fragrance. But anyways, it's a lovely tea perfume. Um, I tried a few of the perfumes. Not all of them last a really long time. It's a little bit like hit and miss. So uh, I can't give you a definite answer as to what my final thoughts are on the brand. But the packaging and the whole story uh, just is beautiful. That is a 10 out of 10, in my opinion. Uh, what fragrance are you wearing right now? Okay, so um, I am wearing a mix, as usual. Um, I am wearing the fragrance from Nishane Tempfluo. I've recently got like more and more into it. I really liked it when it first launched and then I kind of forgot about it because there's a lot of perfumes in my collection. And um, I went into it again and I'm really loving it. It's like a niche version of Libre from YSL, which I'm really into at the moment too. And then on top of that, I layered um, Ilang Kalanga from Chloe. It's uh, part of the Atelier des Fleurs collection. I don't know if any of you guys have tried the Atelier des, Heures, uh, Atelier des Fleurs collection because it is super nice. It's all about like the concept of layering different florals which is music to my ears. Um, and so, yeah, that one is really nice. It basically smells like a tropical holiday, which is delightful. Uh, what do you think of Middle Eastern perfumes that are trendy right now? So I've got a lot of questions about Middle Eastern perfumes um, across all my social media channels, actually. And to be honest, I don't know that many Middle Eastern brands. I haven't really looked into it, but I'm really curious because... From what I've seen online, they look amazing. So if you have any recommendations of brands that I should be checking out or specific fragrances, please write them down in the comments because I'm just, I'm really intrigued. I definitely want to try them. I feel like there's a lot of uh, hidden gems that have yet to be discovered. So yeah, I would love that if you wouldn't mind putting a few of these in there. <laughs> Curly fragrance, Middle Eastern fragrances are the best. Well, now that you're based in Dubai, I'm sure you're going to be the queen of reviewing Middle Eastern fragrances. You have a lot of choice over there, so I'm sure I'll uh, I'll discover a few gems from you too. <laughs> best summer Serge Off fragrance for men, according to you. So, Serge Off. You would have seen from my perfume collection video that uh, I did not shy away from saying my my disappointment with Zerzhov. The reason being the packaging was faulty um, and it's not just once, it happened twice. And I was a little bit put off by the brand because of that. Not that the scents are not nice, the scents are really nice. My wedding scent was a Zerzhov scent. It was Apollonia and I love it, it's beautiful. Um, but the one that just broke twice um, was Cruz del Sur 2. Uh, so, I don't know, it kind of put me off from buying anything from the brand. That being said, recently I was in Paris and I was on a trip, like a work trip, and there was another influencer. She was wearing Torino 21 and her husband, or sorry, fiance as well. And on, I could not stop telling them how, smell they, how good they smelled. That one I would buy and I would recommend to you. It is fresh. It is such a head turning perfume. I don't know it well enough to give you more information, but all I can say is I, I just loved the way that they both smelt. And from what I hear, it is long lasting. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, what is my favorite perfume? Goodness, it's like asking me like to choose between my favorite, my, my children. Like I, I can't give you a favorite perfume. I have shared a short on five of my favorite fragrances. So if I had to throw away my entire perfume collection, those would be the five that I would keep. Have a look on the shorts tab um, under my channel. I've been posting more shorts lately as well. So um, more content, I would say on a daily, more or less on a daily basis, but it's in there. Um, so you can have a look. <laughs> um, Torino 21 is fantastic, yes. <laughs> um, okay, so let's have a look. What's, oh wait, one more thing. What's your favorite men's summer scent? Lots of love. Um, well, I'm gonna have to say Bohemian Lime by Goldfield and Banks. Honestly, guys, like if you've been watching my videos for a while, I have been like a broken record when it comes to this perfume. It is a long lasting citrus fragrance that projects really well. And it is amazing. It's as if you were having a 
tropical lime ginger cocktail on a hamaca on a beach somewhere really remote. That is what this perfume is. So I would recommend that one. Um, let's have a look at the community tab for additional questions. Um, let's have a look. Ah, someone was saying, I would love to hear more about your time at perfumery school in France. Um, I remember a video when you talked about it and found it fascinating. Any lifestyle topics would be great too. So um, perfumery school, I can give you a little bit more information as to what that was like. I can only speak for uh, Isipka, <laughs> which was uh, the school that I went to. So basically, um, when it came to, so my master's did perfume, but also cosmetics, which meant it was a mix between like um, skincare and also makeup. So we learned all about formulation and evaluation of perfumes, skincare and makeup. And obviously my favorite was perfume. And within the perfume area, we learned to create basic accords, like, you know, citrus accords, sheep accord, um, Back in the day, they would say Oriental, so Amber Accords now, um, and Fougère as well. Um, and we also learned how to use um, like perfume and applications. So, for example, like shower gels, candles, um, and all that kind of stuff. So I really enjoyed being in the lab. Like we were in the lab from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. I'm telling you, smelling for this amount of time is exhausting. That being said, I do that <laughs> for a living now, but back in the day, it was, it's, it's a lot because when you're smelling, you're constantly concentrating. And that is like, I was just wiped out by the end of the day. Um, but that was really cool. And we also learned about, you know, iconic perfumes, perfumes that shaped the industry. And we had to learn how to recognize them. So there would be a lot of blind smelling and you would not believe, but some of my exams were basically just smelling perfume strips and having to guess what ingredient or what perfume I was smelling. Um, so that was really good. There was also a part of chemistry, um, which was interesting uh, to kind of understand like, you know, how um, uh, like the, the different molecules work and like um, that was like from a more scientific perspective, that was great. And then, um, so that was Isipka. And then um, I went to uh, the University of Padova to do the business marketing side. So we had like your typical like marketing courses, uh, management courses, and it was like more based on case studies. And we've had a few brands come in to present their brands and like, you know, their strategies and marketing plans and all that kind of stuff, which uh, was great. And I think one of the brands that came was Merchant of Venice. Um, which uh, if you guys uh, are um, planning on going to Essence or have been to Essence before in Milan, they attend Essence. So that's pretty cool. Um, what was your favorite accord to create in perfumery school? Um, so it wasn't so much an accord. There was one class where we could recreate any fragrance that we wanted on the market. And I remember when we were smelling like all the market leaders and like, you know, the, 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 the perf like basically perfume history, one of the fragrances that I loved so much, surprise, surprise, an orange blossom scent, <laughs> um, was Classique, the Eau de Toilette, or uh, yeah, Classique Eau de Toilette from Jean-Paul Gaultier. So I wanted to recreate that scent in the lab and that's exactly what I did. I mean, it's not the same perfume at all, but um, it was a really fun exercise and I got a lot of help from uh, the person who was leading the class, but that was very memorable. I really liked that. Uh, so what else? Advice on purchasing hard to get fragrances such as Baby Cat. Well, that is a great question because I haven't cracked that code yet. I'm currently on the hunt for the new Miu Miu fragrance called Fleur de Lait. If you know where I can get my hands on this perfume other than in Japan, please comment in, in there because I, I don't know. And Baby Cat, um, I found it actually. I, I put it in um, my video description box actually. Um, you can find it at, what's it called? Is it Holt? Yeah, Holt Renfrew uh, in Canada. I found it there. So have a look at 
like go on the whole run through website and type in baby cat and you can hopefully it's still in stock there but last time i checked which was around like last week or two weeks ago you could still get it <laughs> uh, oh gosh so many questions guys <laughs> Oh, it's going too fast. I can't actually read the questions. Um, one for formal events, one for a date night. What are your top two? Uh, okay, formal events. Okay, a great formal event perfume that I discovered, which I will be talking about in next week's video, is a rose fragrance from Ex Nihilo Brompton Immortals. You guys, this perfume is outstanding. Like, this is fireworks in my nostrils type of fragrance. It, you know what's amazing about it is um, if you take Rouge Malachite, which is a white floral amber, but you know that beautiful benzoin vanillic ambery base in Rouge Malachite? You take that, but then you put rose instead of the, the white florals. To me, that is what Brompton Immortals is like. And it's such a black tie type of perfume, unisex as well. And for date night, for date night, for date night, the one that just comes to my mind right now is Givenchy Interdiorge. Um, ah, Charlene is here. Hi. <laughs> okay, so um, let's have a look again at the community tab. Um, let's just have a quick look. Lots of questions, which is amazing. You guys are great. Like, thank you so much for making me feel so comfortable <laughs> to do this live. Because as I said at the beginning, I was literally freaking out <laughs> before. Um, So I had some questions um, about, about some career milestones, which I thought was really interesting because um, I really haven't shared like that much stuff with you around that. Um, and there's two that comes to mind. The first one, uh, basically these two happened in the last year. So the first one had to do with the transition from going to a nine to five job to full-time creating content or you know, basically becoming an entrepreneur. Um, because when I decided to take the leap, I mean, yes, I had savings, thankfully, <laughs> but you know, it's it's you don't really you're you're basically diving into the unknown. You don't know if that is gonna work out. And my husband there's always this one sentence that comes to my mind. And my husband is a really smart guy. He always, he would tell me when I decided to make the leap, he's like, excuse my language. He's like, you need to have, you need to feel as if you have fire under your ass. And that sentence has stuck with me whenever I'm feeling lazy. I think about that. And I think that is uh, certainly something that has helped me keep the drive. Uh, throughout last year um, and it's gone super well but you know as with a lot of entrepreneur journeys like you know one year is not similar to the next you don't really it, it, it's there's so much unknown you don't know what it's going to be like I have no idea what this year has in store so let's see but I'm super excited about it and the second milestone which frankly I could stop you know doing my whole fragrance journey right now because like for me this this couldn't have gone any better. The second one was an incredible, incredible partnership opportunity with a major luxury brand, which I never in my life did I think that I would work with them. Never. Like I, it was like so out of reach. Um, but uh, that was pretty incredible. Um, so I'm going to tell you, and I actually... I'll be posting a vlog on this tomorrow um, so that I'm, you know, I'm taking you like behind the scenes um, and I've had like approval to, to, to show you all of this because the campaign isn't live yet, but it will be very soon. 
so I worked with Dior uh, on a new feminine fragrance campaign, which is so wild. <laughs> like, how did this even happen? But um, I went to Paris uh, at the end of last year and um, I basically shot an entire day um, in a studio for um, Miss Dior. And uh, that was pretty wild, uh, to, to say the least. And I was there with three other girls um, who were lovely. Um, also, some like one was in fragrance, another one was in beauty. Um, one was like more fashion. So there's like lots of different elements there. And it was really, really cool. Honestly, I cannot wait for you to see the behind the scenes because it literally felt like a princess fairy tale Cinderella moment. I felt like Cinderella I'm not gonna lie like I in my mind I was like this is not real this isn't happening like how how you know um so yeah I can't wait for you to see this um it should be coming out really soon but in the meantime you'll have tomorrow's video to uh to look through it so yeah, can't wait and of course as I have um any more updates and details I will definitely share it with you you can tell how excited I am by my vein here like if you ever see my vein pop up on videos that's like when I'm like very excited and passionate about something it usually comes out to play <laughs> anyways um will they be another collaboration with Jovoy Discovery set more men leaning set good question um I I will think about it <laughs> um I to be fair I haven't um really set out my plans yet for this year. So I will keep that in mind. My question to you is, because I know a lot of you are based in the US and I know that the shipping was crazy expensive and unfortunately there is literally nothing that I can do about it. And I have pushed, I the store is um, in Paris, but also in London and I've been in contact with both of them. I shop regularly at the London one and I kept on asking if there's anything that could be done for the shipping. And unfortunately it's a fixed rate that they really can't do anything about. So if I was to do another discovery set, um, is that really an issue for you? Um, is that like super annoying? I, knowing that I can't do anything about it. Like, is that something that would stop you from purchasing it? Because I don't want to do something that, you know, yeah, it is just not worth, not, 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 not worth it for you. So, um, yeah, let me know, let me know, um, your thoughts on that. Um, you know, I would love to do push more samples. And this is something that you'll be seeing more of this year, actually. And I have something coming up very soon with uh, another brand, actually, uh, with regards to sampling on Instagram. So you guys make sure you check out my stories on Instagram because that's where usually all this happens. But this is something for me that I find extremely um, important is, you know, being able to sample for the fragrances, any fragrance really, but especially niche where um, they're more difficult to get. And that's kind of like, that. that's where the idea of the Jovoy Discovery set came. Cause I, I remember a lot of you commenting on my videos saying, oh, you know, like the fragrances that you talk about a little bit more obscure, I can't find a sample of this. So that's why I approached them and said, look, like it'd be great to have all the fragrances that I love in one place so you guys can test it um, without having to commit to um, the full size bottle. So let's see, let's see um, how everything develops this year. Uh, I know you since today, love your videos, but I don't know who you are. Oh, hi. <laughs> so uh, my name is Josephine. Um, I feel like this is an interview almost, um, but no, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm Josephine and I have been on YouTube for three years where I talk about perfumes and I'm also on Instagram and TikTok. So I review all about fragrances um, for men, for ladies. And, uh, and yeah, that's me. <laughs> Um, best fresh floral perfumes for women. Oh my goodness. I have so many. I feel like I need to do a dedicated fresh floral perfume video, right? Would you like that? I, I would so be down for that. Um, one that comes to mind is Luna from Penhaligans and it's perfect for spring. Like for me, this is like the smell of um like you know early blooms it's a fresh citrusy rose think about having picnic in a park 
in the springtime surrounded by blossoms. That's that's what I think of when I smell Luna. A really affordable one that is also great for spring, by the way, is um, Quatre by Boucheron for women. That one is so affordable. You get a lot for like you get a lot of value for what you're um, paying for the 100 ml bottle. And I think you can maybe get this on Amazon, certainly at discounters. That's a really good fresh one too. And it's like a floral, fruity, citrus scent. It's really, really nice and totally underrated. I don't know why more people don't talk about it. Bonjour, une vidéo en français bientôt. <laughs> um, alors, j'ai beaucoup de questions par rapport à ça. Et honnêtement, euh, je me sens plus à l'aise à parler en anglais et à faire des revues en, de parfums en anglais euh, qu'en français. Donc du coup, pour le moment, je pense que je vais continuer avec les revues en, en anglais et peut-être, on verra, peut-être dans le futur, euh, j'en ferai une en français. <rire> Okay, so some other questions. Oh, I, there was a really interesting question that I saw about reformulation and what my thoughts were on perfume reformulation. And actually, I would love to hear your thoughts on this as well, because I think I'm a little bit naive to the whole reformulation thing, and I want to believe the best in everyone, but maybe it's not the right approach. <laughs> so... Um, a lot of, as you know, there's a lot of reformulations happening, um, you know, especially over the last few years. And in my mind, I was like, well, you know, brands are not reformulating to water down fragrances for the sake of watering them down. That, 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 that's, you know, that, that's not why they're doing it. Maybe they are, but that's not what I was thinking. And I'm still kind of on, you know, I'm, I'm in a bit of a limbo with that. I was thinking that the reason why there's so many reformulations, which I do think this is the case, is because of a lot of ingredients being um, banned by IFRA. And for those of you who don't know IFRA, it's um, a uh, organization that kind of regulates uh, the concentrations of certain perfume ingredients that you can use in fragrances and brands need to abide to that with their for, uh, fragrance formulations so that it is safe to use. Now there's, you know, the odd person here and there that can get a, a, an allergic reaction. And if there's too many people that get an allergic reaction, then they will ban an ingredient and the reformulation process begins. So, um, so yeah, I, that, that kind of was my initial thought. I was like, well, they reformulate it. And actually some of these perfume ingredients, um, like Lilial, for example, um, or even um, Oak Moss Absolute, they, they're very difficult to replace. And I, from what I hear, Lilial, which was one of the recent ones, um that one was great with giving like a lot of longevity to 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 perfumes and we're seeing that um the reformulation without it the fragrances don't last as long because they have yet to find a um a, a substitute that that works as well as Lilial. um so that that that's kind of it but then you know there could be brands that are just reformulating for the sake of reformulating so that they can improve their margins and yada 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 i don't know that that's i i, I still like to believe the best in people um so that's how i see it but uh but yeah <laughs> i appreciate reformulation when it's around safety but not when it's slowing the cost i completely agree and i think that um within the fragrance it, in general there's not a massive amount of transparency when it comes to formulations of perfumes. Um, and, you know, if you look at a perfume label, you'll see the, you know, the, the, there'll be a few ingredients here and there, and then there'll be a bunch of, um, uh, of like, you know, chemical looking names. And these chemical looking names are actually the, back in the day, I think it was 24, 26 listed allergens that needed to be included in every single uh, label of perfume, now there may be more, I haven't looked at the updated one, but it was uh, by law, you had to include a list of the allergens within um, the fragrance. So if you use like a certain oil, maybe like, a, I don't know, a certain rose oil, they it probably does contain allergens. Um, so yeah, I agree. I think it's just very difficult to, to, to get that full transparency, you know, as to, to what brands are doing. Um, it's not as tightly regulated as like the food industry, for example. Um, and what's interesting is like, I'm also quite present on TikTok and I frequently get comments from people saying, you know, perfumes are not safe, like you're putting way too much, like you're going to get cancer. 
Um, and I feel like people are genuinely concerned as to what they're putting on, on themselves. Um, I'm not really too fussed. I mean, you know, when it comes to food, like one day, like at this point, salad is going to give you cancer. You know what I mean? Like people just, just, you know, there's always going to be a problem. So, but I, I feel like uh, there is a gen, genuine interest in that. And so I don't know what, it, like, I, I'd be curious to hear what you think about this, like whether, yeah, uh, you would be more concerned with safety or do you think like just brands are just, you know, being brands and trying to get more profit? I don't know. <laughs> um, oh, I heard that reformulations happen because they decide not to work with that specific scent designer and want to have credit in the house. That as well, actually, with um, brands being acquired by um, different companies. So say uh, like a specific brand was with one big company like, I don't know, Estee Lauder, and then L'Oreal bought it, they might want to go with a different supplier. And yes, reformulation would then happen. Yes, you are totally right. Um, but that, I mean, it's so out of your control. You know, sometimes when I review fragrances, I get questions on, you know, is this reformulated? What batch number it, it is? Like, I don't know. This is the kind of thing that I find gets way too technical. And I, I just, I just find it like really confusing. I never look at batch numbers. I just, I don't understand it. <laughs> so I just I'm like, I'll buy the fragrance and be like, okay, well, this is what it smells like. And if, you know, it happens to be the same batch as you, great. Um, yeah. <laughs> All recommendations for fragrances are either Zerjoff, Umbert Luca or Clive Christian, basically sponsored or expensive ones. Um, I can't really, I, I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't watch that much content online around fragrance because that's all I do all day. Uh, so I, I, I wouldn't be too sure on that. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't, I didn't even know Clive Christian did sponsorships to be fair. I think, um, there definitely is uh, a lot going on for the like niche fragrances in general. And, um, especially like, you know, with like the YouTube and Instagram game, like there's, they're, they're very present on these social media platforms. Um, I think it's fine to, 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 you know, do sponsorships and things, but obviously, you know, this needs to be disclosed properly um but yeah i i can't further comment on these brands because uh yeah i don't watch stuff on youtube <laughs> how do you style your hair so it is the most simple and basic thing that i do i just blow dry it and then I use my curling iron to do this. I'll just like, imagine this is my curling iron here. I go like this and I flip that like that. And I just actually know it'd be the other way around. This is my curling iron. I flip it and then I bring it down like that. And it literally creates the curl. That's it. And then I just kind of brush it out. Don't put anything in my hair. Maybe like a bit of a serum um, for, for dry ends and that's it. <laughs> Oh, I like this question. What is your personal opinion on fragrance clone houses? Okay, guys, I feel so strongly about this. I cannot support clone houses. I understand that not everyone has, you know, a budget to get a $300 bottle of perfume. I totally understand that. Um... I do think that there is um, there uh, like there's a way to acquire some of these. You know, either you save up, um, or you could get them on discounts. You know, when there are promotions throughout the year, like maybe Black Friday or that kind of stuff. But honestly, clone houses for me is a big no-no. I cannot support brands that copy other brands. It's like you know, buying fake designer bags, for example, um, I would personally, I would rather save my money and invest in a quality piece if it is quality, because nowadays there's a lot of new niche brands that are popping up and like claiming to have all these expensive ingredients and, you know, claiming to be the best thing. And it's always the same speech using the rarest raw materials, most precious raw materials with the finest noses, blah, 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 blah. I feel like I've heard this marketing spiel over and over again. Um, so you need to also do your research. You know, if the brand, if the perfume is worth getting at an expensive price, I personally save up for it. 
is just like having like a nice designer item. You may as well save up for it and get something that is beautiful and really qualitative rather than buying like something that, you know, is just a knockoff of it. That's my opinion. That being said, um, the perfume industry enables this kind of behavior. So I don't think the clone houses will ever go away. Um, I just, I don't, yeah. Knowing like how much, how long it takes to develop a fragrance, all the creativity that goes into it and clone houses just like create knockoffs of this is just, it's not cool. What about Zara? Oh, okay. So Zara, I've done a few videos on Zara and I've bought a lot of fragrances from Zara to do um, reviews. And I've kept a few of them that I like to wear. Zara, when it comes to their perfumes is like, is the same principle as their clothes. So Zara is fast fashion. Perfumes is fast perfume. They they will copy everything. And, and by the way, the fragrances that I kept are not copies, except for one, which is like a Santal 33 dupe. But I wear it because I prefer the way that it smells on my skin versus the Santal 33 one. So they approach the same way. The fragrances, they're trendy because they're trendy scents that everyone is loving. They're not long lasting. Um, they, you know, they're very cheap. So you can't expect that much for it. You know, it's kind of like their clothes. And frankly, the quality of their clothes, this is like another topic, but the quality of their clothes has significantly de decreased over the years. And I find that they apply the same thing to their fragrances. And the other day, this was like last week, I was in Zara and I was shopping there to, to get a few things. And I was, as I was waiting for the till, there was the, all the perfumes that were laid out and it was disgusting. It was, you know, like, I don't know, like the, like a, the worst supermarket that you can think of with boxes half opened, half ripped open. Like it was just not pleasant. So I, I'm like done with Zara. I'm done, <laughs> except maybe for the odd blazer here and there that I can get. I no longer want to shop there and consume any of the products unless I can get some like, you know, the odd good piece here and there. But I just I can't be with, with Zara anymore. Um, best source of authentic samples. Uh, so I, I have a few places where I would recommend getting samples. I've bought a lot of samples, actually. I have, would that be interesting? Would you like to see my sample perfume collection? Because I think that it is as big, if not as bigger than my current perfume collection. Um, so um, where to buy authentic samples. You can get samples or discovery sets from niche brands. A lot of them do them. Um, either they are in uh, 2ML formats or um, in uh, travel spray formats, which are a little bit more expensive. So if you can get the, the little ones, it's better. Um, or you, there's a variety of websites in the US, in the UK. Lucky Scent in the US is great. Max Aroma is great in the US as well. Twisted Lily um, in the UK. You have Fragrance Samples UK, which is fab. Um, have a look at my... Um, my shorts, uh, again, my shorts tab, I have like, basically you can take a screenshot um, of the video because I list them all in there. And also scent split, of course. <laughs> uh, do you have a perfume guilty pleasure? Um, funny enough, it is a Zara one. <laughs> uh, it's called hibiscus um, and it does not smell like hibiscus, but that one, that one and also La Belle Le Parfum from Jean-Paul Gaultier. Like recently I've been like, mm, I kind of like it, but I didn't really like it. It's like it's quite generic and I'm, I'm a bit of a snob that way. So I'm like, mm, I don't know if I want to go with it. But uh, yeah, those would be my, my, my guilty pleasures. Lots of questions still on whether I'm planning my own perfume. Um, so uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is something that right now isn't in the cards. Um, I want to take my time with developing this and um, making sure that I'm bringing, you know, the best that I can for you. Um, and also, as I said earlier as well, include you guys in the process because I think that's super important. Um, so we'll see. <laughs> Natural ingre ingredient perfumes versus synthetic. 
Great, great question. Um, I feel these days that synthetics, whenever you say synthetic, and I'm guilty of using the word synthetic saying, you know, oh, this smells synthetic. This is not good. Wait. So yeah, take it with a pinch of salt. But um, uh, synthetics are not all bad. And um, I think when it comes to a great fragrance, you need a mix of the two. You need a mix of naturals and you need a mix of synthetics to create a beautifully complex creation. Otherwise, if you have one or the other, it falls a little bit flat. So um, if you have a perfume with just naturals in there, um, you can smell probably like really lovely quality of naturals and you will, you know, you'll get the evolution of the raw ingredient. But often when it comes to natural perfumes, they don't um, last very long. Uh, it's very difficult for them to, to have a really great longevity. Synthetics are fantastic to add complexity and also to help um, with the longevity of a fragrance. And on top of that, when it comes to naturals, um, more people think that it's better than synthetics, but actually in naturals, you have, um, you know, a very like high concentration of lots of different molecules. And one of these can become an allergen and then be listed in IFRA as being, you know, an ingredient that needs to be removed. So that's why as well, like synthetics have been developed so that those um, certain naturals that would create allergic reactions, well, you have a synthetic version that wouldn't. Um, so I think it's a really interesting debate. Uh, so yeah, my, my answer would be a mix of the two. My favorite cherry perfume is Kayali's Love Fest Burning Cherry, which I bought and I just posted a video on this. I would not buy it again <laughs> because, and I knew this, I knew buying it, I would, it, I you know, it was going to be the case. It's a perfume that doesn't last. It disappears like after two to three hours on my skin, which is hugely frustrating, but I bought it because I just, I loved the way it smelled. I, I just love it. And I like to layer it with Oud for Greatness. So when I layer it with Oud for Greatness, it lasts, thank goodness. Um, but that would be, a, a that's a lovely cherry fragrance. I would maybe hold off on buying it until, um, maybe they reformulate it and make it longer lasting. That would be fantastic. Or they come out with like an intense version, even better. Favorite book, favorite movie, favorite song. Uh, favorite book. Good. Uh, I, I, to be honest, I don't have a favorite book. Um, I'm reading a lot of books at the moment uh, to do with like, um, you know, self-improvement and all that kind of stuff. I'm reading Atomic Habits, which I find to be really interesting. I actually have a book here that I'll be taking with me on holiday that I'm very excited to read. It's called A Very Short History of Life on Earth. And I love, um, you know, like just to, to learn about like the evolution of the earth and like the species and all that kind of stuff. So that's like my geeky side, which I really enjoy. Favorite movie... Favorite movie? Oh my gosh, easy. Jurassic Park. I love dinosaurs and that is like my favorite movie of all time. I, I, I don't think, I, I think I could reenact every single scene and every, I could be all the characters at once. That That's my favorite movie of all time. Um, and my favorite song, my favorite, I, I don't have a favorite song. I have a bunch of different songs uh, on my Spotify. All of them usually tend to be like on like Deep House slash Minimal um, that, or like Jungle House. That That's the kind of vibe that I really enjoy. Um, you need to go to Hawaii and take the helicopter ride where they filmed the movie. Yes. Also, I feel like they uh, filmed it in Costa Rica. That <laughs> I would love that. That would be amazing. Oh my gosh. In fact, um, I'm going on holiday on Friday and uh, I will be watching Jurassic Park in the plane. I, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'll be downloading this. Uh, what do you think about Orphéon from Diptyque? Great. I love it. This is on my wish list and it's been on my wish list for a while. Um, I would say if you like Fleur de Peau, 
you'll probably really enjoy also Orphéon, um, or even Woman in Gold from Killian. I find that the two share a lot of similarities, beautiful, powdery, elegant fragrance. It's, it's stunning, really, really nice. When is your cooking channel coming? <laughs> oh my gosh, I would love that. Oh. Um, one day when I have a little bit more time um, and maybe a team to help me out, I would probably start a cooking channel big time. Oh my goodness. I, I would love that. I would love to share with you, especially my dessert recipes. I have a massive sweet tooth and, um, and you know, I could do them inspired by fragrances. If you've been following me from the beginning, uh, I have a blog, judorose.com, where I share uh, a lot of, uh, recipes inspired or desserts inspired by fragrances. So yeah, I hope one day. Um, I received Le Vent and ingredients this week. Amazing. Le Vent has stolen my heart. Isn't it such a beautiful fragrance? Oh, so good. The One of the best discoveries from last year, truly. Um, okay. Let's see. Let me see if I have some other things here. <sighs> uh, sorry guys, I'm just looking through. Ah, okay, question here. You spend a lot of time making videos as the quality is very good. Thank you. <laughs> Please share your planning process whilst making videos. So I don't know if there's still some other fellow YouTubers around here, but uh, when it comes to filming, a lot goes into planning actually. Um, so it can take you know several days, a week or so to plan. Um, I'll have to test all the fragrances because I know you want to know the longevity, the projection. So I test every single one of them, give them a proper wear, and that can take a little bit of time. So, um, and then I have a notebook where I put all of my notes and all of my thoughts uh, around the fragrances. Um, and then that's pretty much it. If there's uh, outfits um, or, you know, something that is um, related to perfume, but not just fragrances, that can take a little bit longer because then I have to do like research and, um, you know, uh, shop for clothes and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, I'll, you know, it takes also time to kind of find the right inspiration and all that kind of that stuff. So yeah, that the planning takes a while. Then I film. Filming and setup usually takes me an hour and a half for a 10 minute to 15 minute video, which you wouldn't uh, necessarily know, but it does take some time. And then after that, um, um, you know, editing takes even longer between eight to 12 hours. It depends on the, the type of video. But luckily, I have someone now um, who is supporting me with um, the editing of my YouTube videos, which is uh, a massive, massive help. So that is that is great. Um, let's see. I would like to see reviews on exclusives that one can only get at places like Harris, Selfridges, Liberty, or Gala in Paris, such as the Boutique Upsis and Gala Iris Ganesh. Um, I think that would be a great idea. Uh, that being said, I know that a lot of people are dotted around the world and might not be able to get them. So I'm not sure how useful that would be um, for a lot of you like if would you be interested in me doing this but knowing that you may not be able to get them uh, I, I don't know D t tell me uh in the comments uh do you think the french create the best fragrances um i think there's a lot of great nationalities that create fragrances not you know the french are one of them um, but you know, Italians as well in the Middle East as well. Like, like I, I just, I don't think there's, you know, one country that does it better than another. I think we have, there, there's a lot of great ones everywhere to be fair. 
please do one video where you speak entirely in French. So I thought that it could be entertaining to do a video where I just pronounce names in French the entire time. <laughs> Is that something that you would like to see? Because I often get, you know, um, comments on my pronunciation with regards to the, the perfume names and the brands and, um, and that some of you like come back to my videos to, to see how to properly pronounce them. Like, I don't know, would, would that be interesting? Let me know. <laughs> um, top three musk scents for men. Uh, well, it depends what you mean by musk. Uh, if you're looking for something that is clean and soapy and like powdery and like cocooning, I have a full video on this um, on my channel. It's called um, Smell Clean. So have a look there. Um, do you like Gris Dior? Um, you know what? I am not wowed by this perfume. I really wanted to because everyone is talking about it, but I it's just it's okay for me not not crazy to be fair <laughs> uh yes please to saying the names in french french with english subtitles okay <laughs> i'll think about it <laughs> hello are you french because when you pronounce yes je suis Fran je suis franco suisse et donc uh, c'est pour ça que que j'arrive à à parler bien français ça aide on va dire uh and anything educational Okay. Um, did you try the new Her Forever? From No, I didn't know there was a new fragrance. I have been so behind with the new launches, actually. That was one of the questions um, from the community tab was with regards to new perfumes. So I, I haven't smelled a lot of the new fragrances. Two, I think. It was The first one was a memo one because uh, I went to a launch event and I'm wearing it now. So I'm waiting to see like how this develops on the skin. On the blotter, it was super nice. And then um, I can't remember what the second one was, but I will be bringing back the uh, monthly new fragrance launch reviews, hit or miss, they're coming. I will do it for the month of February and combine the month of Jan so you have all the new fragrance news uh, and that you're up to speed. Do you like Missing Person by Fleur? Yes, I do. Um, I think... It is a very comforting fragrance and a lot of people have said that it smells like someone that you love, um, you know, whether that is a lover um, or family, someone that you hold dear to your heart. And that's really powerful. This is the power of scent. Um, and so definitely missing person gets that. It's not a perfume that is like, you know, crazy projecting or anything like that. In fact, when I wear it, um, I become anosmic to it after a certain period of time because I think of all the musks um, that are in there. Um, but there's something that's like really soft and cozy about it. And it's really nice. Uh, best designer fragrance ever. My choice is Dior Parfum. I mean... You're coming here with big guns. <laughs> Dior Parfum is fantastic. I love the original Dior. Um, oh my goodness. It is fabulous. Um, I would say for sure that the for men, the, the Dior um, range is really, really up there. Um, I'm going to be really basic uh, and say that Yves Saint Laurent, La Nuit de l'Homme, is fabulous. Um, it's just a good all year round scent, uh, even though it's, it's not super strong and you need to reapply buckets, but I just still think it smells really good. Do you have Montel Fre uh, Parfum? I do not. Um, and I'm not, I'm not a massive fan of Montel. There's like one fragrance, to red, tobacco, red tobacco or something tobacco, I forget. I've, I've talked about it and I already forgot the name. Um, but uh, I just find that they, they all share a similar DNA, which I don't like. And I'm going to say it is a synthetic DNA, which I just, I, yeah, it's not my thing. So no, I don't um, own Montal fragrances, nor do I plan on purchasing any time soon. Uh, when did you start obsessing over fragrance? Uh, ever since I was little. I mentioned it at the beginning of the live that um, it was basically my mom who introduced me to perfumes and I had a, a little perfume game where you had to guess the different fragrances that, uh, to smell. 
uh, as a kid and it was like my favorite board game. So that's kind of where it all uh, started. What is your advice for someone interested in fragrance but is not familiar with the different scents? Um, I think the you just need to go out and um, smell. Just go out and smell um, is, is the, the, the best advice I can give you. I mean, as much as YouTube is a great platform uh, on education around fragrances, ultimately fragrance is super subjective and personal. So just go out, sniff, don't smell 20 perfumes at a time. So start by smelling maybe four or five max. And then, you know, ask um, the sales associate, you know, like, oh, I want to choose different categories. Like I want to smell, you know, a sweeter perfume, like a vanilla, for example, or I want to smell a floral or, you know, and kind of start going that way and work yourself up gradually. Um, that's how I would start. I think that the, the easiest way to understand whether you like something or not is to go out yourself um, and, and, you know, smell it yourself uh, rather than being, rather than listening to, you know, reviews and things like that. Um, even though they can be helpful, um, I think, you know, yeah, you, you, you're, you're the best person to know what you like. Are you planning to do a declutter video? Yes, I am. I actually have over there <laughs> a full closet of a lot of fragrances that I need to get rid of. And I, I did a declutter video a while ago and you're not gonna believe, but I didn't end up selling my fragrances. <laughs> I sold a few, but I was too lazy and I just didn't, I didn't do it. I didn't even know where to sell them. And I just, but now it comes to a point where I have a lot. And what I want to do with this is I will be giving away some, um, and I will also be selling some and with part of, um, the, the, the proceeds from the sale, I will be giving it away to charity. So I need to look into that as well and figure out, um, what kind of charity I want to give. I'm thinking along the lines of a charity that focuses around mental health and youth. That would be the idea, but I will for sure do a declutter video. If you guys know where I should like what platform I should look into to sell the fragrances or if it's like more of like a like a Instagram DM situation I don't know just let me know that would be super helpful any review on the Van Cleef perfumes anytime soon uh I haven't thought about that um I have a I have Bois Doré, which I love from Van Cleef and Arpel but um, I haven't really looked much more um, into the range. So for now, no, but never say never. <laughs> Delina or Delina Exclusive? I'm gonna choose option C and go with Delina La Rosée. <laughs> Oh my goodness, sorry guys. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of comments. I don't even know where to start. Uh, oh my gosh, it keeps on, the, the comments keep on moving around so I can't see you. Will you be collaborating with any brands to create your own scent at a Gabby Curly Scents or Sookie London? So uh, I, I, I uh, went through this briefly earlier. Um, at the moment, no. It really needs to feel like an organic fit. I wouldn't collaborate with a brand that, you know, like I've never used um, and that I love. Uh, for now, the uh, occasion hasn't presented itself. Um, so I, yeah, I, I, the answer is I don't know. And I wanna make sure that if I do collaborate with a brand, I can really like bring forward what I wanna bring forward. Um, you know, for example, say I'm like releasing a fragrance I want to make sure that you guys have samples like that's that's the like a no-brainer you know but it's not necessarily easy to do this um with brands because you know you could do limited editions and all that kind of stuff so i don't know there's a lot of things that are going on um to take into consideration and so yeah <laughs> you'll find out if i do i will be shouting on all social media platforms multiple times if uh, i ever do a collab you'll be the first to know <laughs> Uh, 
Thank you for introducing us to Moresque. I bought four. <laughs> wow. And I love them. Seta and Anmapur are amazing. Yes, Moresque is such a great brand. I agree. Um, Seta is so, so nice. So nice. Um, and I'm glad you also like it. <laughs> um, oh, wait, wait, wait. I saw something. Oh, my gosh. The, the, the comment. Oh, please create another Halloween video for this year. Oh, my goodness. So you know how much I get into themes. I love to dress up. It's so fun. And um, a few, what was it? I think it was a few years ago that I did um, basically different Halloween costumes and fragrances together. I feel like I could bring this back this year for sure. Um, and so for each perfume, it was a different Halloween character and I got really into the makeup and it was like, it was a really long video to film to be fair. Like there was a lot of work that went into it, but it was super fun. So I could look into doing it this year. I think it would be, with enough planning, it would be great. <laughs> it would be great to see you testing some new fragrances on your YouTube live. That is a great idea. I would love that. Um, yeah, I can plan that in for the next time we do a live. I don't know. Should we, should we have a live as a monthly thing that we do? Uh, let me know in the comments if you um, want to have like a monthly live. I think, yeah. That could be fun. That could be a really cool um, topic to do. Will you collaborate with another YouTuber like Monica Chok or Sandra Solomon? Um, so this is something that I do need to look into this year. Um, I've been a bit of a like like a solo act, <laughs> and uh, you know not for any particular reason because well actually there is a reason. There was COVID, and I didn't want to do a collab like I've done a collab or two, but. I find that the interaction in person is so much nicer than if you just send a video clip or, you know, if you do something over Zoom, like it doesn't, I don't know, you don't get the same feels. So if I'm able to meet with the ladies and I'm thinking of curly scents, curly fragrance, I know the two of them are going to uh, Essence in Milan this year again. Um, last year was so busy that um, I didn't have time to, to do a video with them, but I'm hoping that this year we'll have time to film because um, I think that would be super fun. And also with Miss Fresh. Mm. Why? Oh, okay. Oh, you can stop the chat from scrolling up and look at the comments for longer. Oh, sorry. I'm new to this. I, I will probably have to like have a look at the replay to see how I figure this out. Um, but yeah. Can you do a Rich Mom perfume review? Yes. I think that would be so fun. Mon Guerlain would definitely be up there for sure. Are you a Virgo? No, I am a Capricorn. I'm very, very Capricorn, I would have to say. Um, no one ever guesses my uh, my zodiac sign right for some reason. But yeah, I'm a Capricorn. Uh, I, was, I was born, yes, I was born 18th of January, 1991. So I'm now 32. Yes, how about one called, if this movie was a fragrance, what scent for Jurassic Park? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, T-Rex from uh, Zoologist, that would be the perfect scent for Jurassic Park. Yes, especially, uh, maybe not the original one, but like the latest one, like the apocalyptic one, uh, like the, the, the final Jurassic Park, or Jurassic World, that would be the right one. Uh, any giveaways or discount codes coming soon? Uh discount codes TBC, but samples will be coming very soon. Watch this face. <laughs> um, collaborate with Clemence. That would be lovely. I collaborated with Clemence um, and Fragmental uh, a while ago when we were in Jovoy in Mayfair, and it was super fun. So that's something that uh, I can look into. <laughs> Oh, thank you guys for the belated birthday wishes. It's very nice. <laughs> and yes, I just had my birthday. Was it last week? I can't tell. Like, I feel like the year is already going by really quickly. <laughs> 
husband smelling your favorite perfumes, please. Okay, well, guys, like this is something that I mentioned in my last q and I do like to keep my private life private. <laughs> so my husband will not be appearing on my YouTube channel or on my social media. Um, but I will be looking to doing collaborations. I think that could be really, really fun. Does your husband get annoyed of the smell of fragrances? I'm a Capricorn too. <laughs> uh, no, he actually, I think he, he doesn't mind it. Um, yeah, sometimes he'll go into my perfume closet and just, you know, pick out a fragrance. He's very adventurous. He likes to layer perfumes as well. And he does his own little concoctions, which I think is really cool. And, uh, and yeah. <laughs> Old Money Girl Fragrance. Uh, old Money Girl Fragrance. There's uh, La Perla, the one with the uh, yellow cap. I don't know the name, but it's the La Perla one, yellow cap. Think of it as like a, a fresher, youthful Chanel number no. five um, without being like jarring or polarizing. That that That's the one I would recommend. Thoughts on Scandale de Parfum. Isn't it better than Hypnotic Poison? I despise Scandale de Parfum. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that is not a fragrance I can stand behind. Uh, as much as I like uh, the So Scandale, Scandale de Parfum is like sweaty florals that have been left macerating in the sun for too long and they've turned brown and are like half dead. No. Josephine, do you like Roger Gallet fragrances? Yes, I do. I love Thé Vert. Uh, and I've actually purchased it three times. It is fantastic. It doesn't last, but it doesn't matter. It is a Cologne type of DNA, uh, fresh citruses uh, with a really soft, musky green tea. I like to wear this uh, before going to bed because I like to wear perfume in bed. Why not? Um, after like I've taken a bath or something, it's just really nice and refreshing. Um, Byredo Pulp Avatar. Yes, I would also say um, Temp Fluo from Nishane could be an avatar one. And uh, what's the name of it? Floro um, from uh, Jeroboam could also be an avatar one. Even Gozo too. I love your content. I have tried several of your recommendations. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm glad that um, we have similar tastes. It's always cool. And also, I just want to say, like, you guys give me such great recommendations. Um, you know so much about perfume. And I think it's really cool that we can exchange on that because I'll go in store and, like, try the fragrances that you recommend. And I think that's awesome. As an expert, please talk about the best perfumes for different body chemistries, lifestyles, e.g. vegans, etc. I'm not sure how um, uh, how to respond to that. Um, I have done a video on um, perfumes for like different occasions. So if you mean lifestyle, like you know, if it's an like like an everyday perfume um, or like something for the evening. Um, if, if that's what you mean, I have a video on that. Body chemistries, I think, is very difficult because it's difficult to predict, like, what a specific fragrance is going to smell on me versus you. That That is, like, it's impossible to do. Um, but if it's more of a fitting fragrance in, like, a, in your life, like, you know, everyday, winter, autumn, etc., I do have a video on this. What do you think of a Chant for the Nymph perfume from Gucci? I haven't tried it, so I wouldn't be able to say. What is the sexiest parfum your husband love when you wear it? Good question. What perfume? Um, I wore hibiscus uh, Mahaja the other day, and he really liked that one. Um, and also uh, L'Interdit Rouge from Givenchy. He's complimented me on those a few times. <laughs> um, Top five perfumes of your husband. 
So it's very simple. I gift him the fragrances. <laughs> so uh, and I and I do a little like weekly rotations so that he can try out different fragrances. Um, I love Spice Bomb Extreme. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Um, and recently he's been doing an amazing layering combo that smells incredible. Uh, he mixes, uh, is it called Oriento by Jeroboam? And also Mystery Tobacco by Carolina Herrera, which is a um, like very like powerful tobacco scent. Like it, like it's a lion. It's a beast of a tobacco. Like compare it, Herod is a little kitty. Like Mystery Tobacco is super strong. And the two together is just really, really good. So that I also like when he wears um, Molecule O2. Uh, that smells really, really good. Um, of course, Bohemian Lime. I love that. Uh, and La Nuit de l'Homme, I would say. Are you planning to review the other YouTubers' perfumes? Uh, I think so. I think I could do a, a full video on this if this is something that you would want. I reviewed Demi's fragrance a while ago when it first came out. Um, so I have a, a video on that. But who else did I review? I, I don't know. I don't remember. I bought a few of them. I bought Fragmentals fragrance. I also bought Curly Scents fragrance, the first one. Um, and she gifted me kindly her new release, which I briefly touched upon, um, in a vlog and it's, it's a really good fragrance. I have to say, I wasn't convinced initially, uh, cause you know, I need to take my time with fragrances. I need to wear them in different situations. Um, but I've been really enjoying it. Um, if this is something that you want to, you want more, uh, topics of that, then yeah, I can, I can definitely do a little review. Any fragrance you're waiting to acquire? Oh dear, the list is never ending, my friend. <laughs> so uh, for sure, Brompton Immortals from Ex Nihilo, my goodness. Torino 21 from Zerzhov, yes. Also Damask from Ormond Jane. Those three are just, are the ones that I, I really, really, really wanna get my hands on. I'm convinced you're the reason why Skirtso by Mila Harris is always sold out. Well, I don't know. It's you guys who 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 ended up buying it, but it's 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 a good perfume. It really is a good fragrance, um, and it's also a really great date night one. I have to say. <laughs> but uh, yeah, something may be happening with them soon. You didn't hear it from me. <laughs> Are you going to keep your collection bottles until you run out of room or would you think of curating your collection? So um, if I wasn't creating content online and reviewing fragrances constantly, I would for sure have a much smaller collection, like a curated selection. But the reality is I do need to keep a lot of perfumes on hand because, you know, if I get asked for this or that review um, and also it enables me to create lots of different styles of content. So for now, I will keep it. But as I mentioned, I will be doing a perfume declutter of some of the fragrances that are just not getting enough love. Not that they're bad perfumes. That's not the reason why I'm getting rid of them. It's just I have a lot of them and I just I just I don't wear them. I don't reach out for them. And I feel uh, that with fragrance being super subjective, one thing that doesn't work for me could work for someone else. And so I hope that it can get a better home. Um, but let's see. Uh, I, I, I definitely need to, to, to keep this within this room because this is my office. It's dedicated to my perfumes um, and I don't want to go beyond that. Um, and yeah, so I, I really do try and maximize um, the use of my collection by putting um, different perfumes out on rotation every week so that I properly use it. And if I don't reach out for certain perfumes, then it's going to go into the pile where um, I, 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 you know, uh, the giveaway pile, basically. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Empress from Soki. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, it, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind doing a review on that at all. <laughs> I've seen the advertisement. There's a lot of purple uh, and uh, it seems really fun. So why not? I love Baby Cat. Why is it so hard to find? Honestly, I don't know. So many of you have said that it... Um, is being discontinued slash discontinued, which is unbelievable because it just launched. Um, 
I'm going to have to, to see if I can get confirmation from, uh, from a source <laughs> to see if that's really the case. <laughs> What are the mini shelves you use to display bottles? Okay, so actually I did a uh, story on Instagram asking if uh, anyone had recommendations for display shelves and I, some, someone on Instagram um, gave me a link to Amazon. So those uh, display shelves for my fragrances, the plastic, clear plastic ones are from Amazon. Um, and you, I think if you type in um, spice rack, plexi display, something like that, you will find it. And they're really good, like honestly, lifesaver and also space saver. Just want to say thank you so much for making the live today. You're gorgeous. So happy to see you here. Honest and best channel on YouTube for reviewing perfumes. That is really sweet. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, and you know, you guys, you guys are the best. Honestly, I, yeah, I wouldn't be here without you guys. Um, so as I said at the beginning of the video, I'm eternally grateful for you. And, um, and I hope that we can do more lives like this because I really enjoyed it. And it's really cool to just interact with you the way that I can just live. I think it's awesome. Um, and I guess, oh, would you like to do a Q personal Q&A? I really like those. Your story and how you ended up doing what you do now, how you grew up, what you wanted to be when you were younger, et cetera. So I, I sort of uh, touched upon this. Um, I, I can tell you really quickly. <laughs> so I was born in Geneva, Switzerland, and then I moved to Singapore, where I partly grew up. Um, my parents were based there. And that's where I learned to speak English. I was in an international school. And then I moved back to Switzerland um, to be, you know, with family. And I uh, basically I was there from the age of like nine and a half, 10 uh, to 18. And then I moved to Canada to um, do my uh, university studies. And then I moved around a little bit before uh, ending up in London. Um, and then, yeah, I what did I want to be? I Initial, well, the first thing I wanted to do was become a lawyer because my brother was a lawyer and he's super smart and I wanted to be like him. And so I started reading like all these complicated books. Like there was, what was it called? Bleak House from Dickens. I decided to read that book and write a whole essay about it. Um, in, I don't know, it was like in like one of my classes in school. And, uh, and yeah, that was not fun. So I decided that was not for me. But I've always loved sciences. I've always loved biology. I've loved chemistry, hate physics, hate maths, cannot do numbers, which is ironic, because I have a science degree, but always into, um, you know, the study of life, how systems work in the body. So that's what brought me to uh, Canada to study life sciences. And then transitioned um not so didn't go think about going to med school thought about it didn't end up doing that and um, went into fragrances instead so that's like a little <laughs> summary as to uh what my life is um oh actually speaking of personal um one question that i was asked actually multiple times was what other hobbies do i have outside of fragrances now as sad as this as sad as this is going to sound because you know, I'm basically starting a business, uh, which is, uh, you know, reviewing uh, and creating content around fragrances online. Um, I don't have that much free time, which is going to sound me sound make me sound quite lame. <laughs> but when I do have some free time, um, I love. Uh, there's lots of things that interest me. Actually, I'm quite a curious person, so um, I love um, animals and nature. And something that I like to do when I go on holiday, if I'm in a hot destination, I like to go scuba diving. And so actually, um, I went with my husband on our honeymoon uh, to French Polynesia, and it has some of the best diving in the world. And honestly, it was so incredible. It was also really dangerous, <laughs> to be fair, but um, it was amazing. Like the wildlife that we saw, I'm going to tell you, we swam with hundreds of sharks hundreds like we were surrounded by them that was incredible 
giant barracudas. Like I actually ran into giant barracudas because of, so there's a lot of, what makes the diving dangerous there is the current. And, um, and I remember we would go on these like little boats and there would be massive waves and we would just like have to hang on dear life to not fall out of the boat. And then all we had to basically dive at the same time, go down really quickly at the same time because of all the current. Um, and then we would just um, go against the reef and then like, kind of be like do drift diving. And so um, I was just drift diving and like I was so fascinated by everything around me that I didn't see that there was like four giant barracudas in front of me just like sticking their heads out. And my husband was like making signs at me and I just didn't understand what he was going on about. And I just literally ran into them. They kind of went away and then went back out after my husband was telling me. But um so we saw that. Uh, we saw lots of really big fish, too. Um, also some dolphins. That was amazing. Amazing. Um, wild dolphins, uh, they came up to us. One mother with um, its baby. Like, it was literally, like, you know, a meter away from me. That was incredible. Um, and they're big. They, they, they were bottlenose dolphins. They were big. And we also did, that was not scuba. This was um, more like not free diving, but like snorkeling. We went um, and dove with humpback whales. That, that I have to say was, was pretty exceptional. So I love that. Um, I think scuba diving is amazing. Truly the underwater world is so incredible. So that's something that I, I absolutely love to do in my free time when I'm on holiday. Um, otherwise, I'm thinking of starting karate again as a, a side hobby. I think that could be really fun. For those of you who don't know, I did karate when I was uh, younger because I was bullied in school. And um, not that I would hit people or you know get physical with people, but it was more, I think, a tool for to gain confidence um, and you know not to be messed around. I feel like when you know how to defend yourself, you you don't get messed around with as easily. And I've never had to uh, be violent with anyone. Oh my goodness, I'm like the most anti-violent person ever. Um, but I remember it being really, um, yeah, really enjoyable to do. I love the discipline. Um, it was very strict. And, uh, and I love that. And the fact that you have different levels that you can achieve um, and the precision uh, and the culture around it. I just really liked it. So I'm thinking of maybe starting that up again this year. Let's see. Love Bali and Flores for diving and nature. Yes. 100% agree. Uh, my husband and I went to uh, the Komodo Islands and that was pretty exceptional. Like there was one dive spot that reminded me of a scene in The Little Mermaid, like in the Disney's Little Mermaid. It was it was amazing. Uh, why were you bullied? I don't I don't even remember. Honestly, I don't know. Uh, I think people it's not anything that is super rare to be bullied. I feel like a lot of people go through this, uh, you know, in, in school at some point, just kids are kids, right? Um, and, you know, I still get bullied as an adult. So <laughs> it is what it is. Um, so, yeah, um, I, to be frank, I don't even remember why. Uh, I just kind of block out all this, all this stuff. <laughs> Heck yeah, for martial arts. You'll be seeing me with a black belt very soon. You'll see, you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> try brazilian jiu-jitsu yeah so i don't know i you know what you know why i i, I want to go with karate is because there's very quick movements and i'm like i have i'm very quick with things you can oh, i'm always talking with my hands but i'm actually like really quick in movements and quite like um i don't know the right word is i'm thinking of the word in french tonique like you know like yeah, rapid. And I feel like that sort of martial art is better adapted for my body rather than uh, jiu-jitsu, if I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> but it does seem like fun. <laughs> Best karate fragrance, oh dear. <laughs> Imagine I just rocking up in my karate class smelling like a million bucks and with all these like niche fragrances, they're going to think I'm half crazy. <laughs> oh gosh. Does your family... Uh, support your lifestyle as a content creator. Uh, 
what do you mean do, as in like do they support me going into content creation or do they support me financially um because if it's the former they do support me um you know doing something that i love um and they do not support me financially i'm financially independent um and uh, and yeah i think you know Ultimately, if you can do if, if if you can do something that brings you happiness, whether that is a job or a hobby, I mean, I think you're winning at life. And for me, I in order for me to be happy, I'm someone that's very passionate and I live passionately. I, I get very excited about things and I need to live my job as a, I need to live my passion as a job. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> hopefully that answers your question. Thank you so much for everything you you are doing for the fragrance community. That's really nice. I don't know if I'm doing much, but <laughs> thank you for your sweet comment. Um, fave Ex Nihilo uh, in Paradise Riviera, limited edition, um, but very good. Do you work out? Yes, um, I do. And actually... Now I'm going to have to do it every day. Now I'm going to explain to you. So basically, uh, uh, towards the end of last year, uh, I really wasn't taking care of myself. Uh, there was a lot going on with work and I just wasn't putting myself forward. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's just, it was just not a, a very pleasant place to be in. It was the same thing that happened the year before. I was having panic attacks. I was having sleep apnea, like all that kind of stuff. And so this time around, I'm like, never again, um, because if I want to continue to do this on the long run, I need to put my health first. So actually, um, January earlier, like two weeks ago, I went and did a course, like a physio course for my back because I have a minor scoliosis. And so my mind was like, well, I'll get that um, in, a, in a good position so that it's a good foundation for working out and, you know, being healthy and all that kind of stuff. So as a result of that course, I'm having to now do 30 minutes every day for, I don't know, I don't know how long, like for the next several years to, you know, do exercises for my back so that my posture is um, improved and, um, you know, to, to prevent the scoliosis from, from getting worse. And then on top of that, um, I, I am back in the gym now. I had broken my foot, so I couldn't really work out, but I'm back in the gym, um, which I'm very excited about and lifting weights and, you know, getting strong and just, it's not about um, necessarily looking good. Before I was thinking, you know, it'd be great to have a nice body, to have abs, to have a bum or whatever. But now it's so much more about um, how I feel in my body and do something that feels good. And if I have a great body as a result of it, great. But it's really more about like feeling good and being more in tune um, with my own body. Um... <laughs> it's good to learn self-defense and keep fit at the same time. Yeah, it's true, actually. See, I didn't even think of this. I was just thinking, oh, well, self-defense, you know, could be a great outlet because you need to, like, concentrate a lot. But then as a result, you, you do work out and you might have also a nice body. I don't know, <laughs> which is really cool. Anyways, um, how do you like Canada so far? Do you see your future in Canada? Are you already married? Would you like to tell us about your future plans? So I, I used to live in Canada um, back in college and... Oh my goodness, this is, it's been a while, um, 10 years ago. What <laughs> is when I started college? Uh, actually, no, before that, oh my goodness. Um, I lived in Toronto, loved it. Uh, I don't think I would uh, go back for work and live there because it's too far away from family and um, I'm very close to my family. So, and they're all based more or less um, in Europe. So I, I don't think I would go back, but definitely I have still some friends. And so for a trip, that would be great. <laughs> How tall are you in centimeters? I'm 175.5. Thanks to the um, scoliosis course that I uh, did, I gained five millimeters. So 175.5. <laughs> do you have gym anxiety? I do. Uh, totally. Also, I signed up at this gym. This It's been a few months now, but I signed up at this gym that is such an intense gym. It's like 
you know, guys are like, ah, like, they're like all super muscular. And I'm like a little skinny twig like walking around in the gym. And it's just like, oh God, like, what am I doing here? And everyone, I feel like everyone's judging you. But, you know, I don't know. I just put my my earphones. I, I listen to my music. Eye of the Tiger is great. Puts me in the mood and I just ignore everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to answer a few more questions because I realize it's been a little while. Um, uh, and then, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll close the live. So, do you ski? Yes, I do. I am Swiss and skiing is in my blood. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I would ski a lot um, when I was younger um, because I, I, I lived in Switzerland. So it was very easy to, to, to get to the mountains. Um, yeah, I love skiing. I went actually uh, back in December, even though there was very little snow, we still managed to get three days of skiing, which made me very happy. Have you tried Ego Stratus? I did a blind buy and I'm obsessed with it. Yes. Oh, this perfume is so good. It's so good. I love it. It's a great office fragrance. Highly recommend it. <laughs> Will this be uploaded? Yes, I think so. I don't, I mean, I thought this was automatic. I'll look into it, but yes, I will uh, save it under the lives tab. So if you want to have a, you know, rerun or relook at it, you can. Uh, and so I think this is it for today's live. Uh, thank you all so Oh my gosh, there's only a lot of questions all coming up now. Uh, Oh gosh. Okay. Um, Fave Narciso Rodriguez. Okay. I'll just answer a few more. Fave Narciso Rodriguez, Musque Noir, uh, the, uh, the original one. Uh, what places do you recommend in Switzerland? Uh, oh, I uh, blah, 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 blah. go, go somewhere in the mountains. <laughs> that, that's what I will say. Go to Zermatt or something. Hi from Singapore. Hi. <laughs> um, Okay, I think I think we're done. <laughs> I think we're done. I'm gonna wrap this up. Otherwise, I will never leave, and I will continue chatting with you for the rest of the night. Thank you so much for tuning in. I never thought so many of you would come. Thank you so so much, and uh, and I hope that maybe we could do this a monthly thing. Like that would be great. Let me know in the community tab if you would like that. Um, I certainly enjoyed our little interaction, and um, I will see you all very soon in tomorrow's video and uh and also i'll be posting another video on thursday so wishing you all a great start to the week thank you all for everything that you do all your support and have a great day or evening bye